Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe visited Fukushima Prefecture on Saturday, three days before the third anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disasters. In Tamura City, Abe met with residents of Miyakoji District. They'll be allowed to return to their homes on April 1st, when an evacuation order for the district is expected to be lifted. It will be the first evacuation order lifted since the nuclear accident. Abe asked residents to express their thoughts. One of them said he wants the government to consider building playgrounds for children as schools will reopen. Abe also visited the Center for Tourism and Local Products in Iwaki City. He tasted freshly caught fish and squid that were captured as part of a test program being carried out to check radiation levels in marine products. Abe pledged to do his best to allay concerns about radioactive contamination of food products. <laughs> he inspected a site in Ogawara district, Okuma town. As part of efforts to rebuild the region, there's a plan to build facilities to study decontamination and the decommissioning of reactors. During this visit to Fukushima, I can feel that recovery has begun progressing. Abe also said he will do his best to rebuild the prefecture as he thinks there will be no revival for Japan without the reconstruction of Fukushima. Japanese regulators are investigating a malfunction in a system that monitors nuclear plants across the country. The Nuclear Regulation Authority uses the Emergency Response Support System to track how reactors are performing. On Thursday night, temperature and pressure data from two reactors at the Fukushima Daini plant stopped showing up. The plant is about 10 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It's been offline since the accident three years ago. The regulators have instructed the plant's operator, Tokyo Electric Power Company, to submit data on the two reactors by fax. They're trying to determine what caused the glitch. <laughs> Energy Panel has released its final report on the March 2011 accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The investigation committee was set up by the Atomic Energy Society of Japan. In the report, the committee calls for enhanced measures to deal with natural disasters and serious accidents. The report says nuclear energy experts failed to have the results of their studies reflected in measures to guard against unexpectedly serious mishaps caused by natural disasters such as earthquakes and tsunami. It also acknowledges that the Atomic Energy Society had little understanding about the role experts should play in enhancing nuclear safety. It says the organization lacked awareness of natural disasters and failed to make sufficient efforts to maintain neutrality. The report urges the nuclear experts to realize that they would not be qualified to be involved in the atomic energy field if they could not properly deal with accidents or tackle disaster prevention. It has been promoting the use of renewable energy. Now a government panel has approved a draft plan for setting new prices that power companies use to buy the energy generated by business firms and households.
Under the law that went into effect two years ago, utilities are required to buy electricity produced by companies and households using renewable sources of energy. Officials on the Industry Ministry Commission say the costs of installing solar panels and other power production equipment are falling. They say this enables a reduction in the purchase price for business-produced solar power to 32 yen per kilowatt hour from the current 36 yen. The price for households will drop to 37 yen from the present 38 yen. And for the first time, the panel disclosed the price of electricity generated at offshore wind farms. It's 36 yen, 1.6 times the price for ground-based wind power generation. The industry ministry plans to finalize the purchase prices Thousands this month. People in Taiwan have rallied against the construction of a nuclear power plant. They say they're worried that an accident similar to the one that hit Japan's Fukushima power plant in 2011 could also happen in Taiwan. Police say about 10,000 protesters took to the streets in the capital Taipei. People in three other cities, including Kaohsiung, also rallied. Concerns over the safety of the plant have increased ever since the 2011 earthquake and tsunami triggered the nuclear disaster in Japan's Fukushima prefecture. More than 90% of the work on Taiwan's fourth nuclear power plant in New Taipei City has been finished. But completion of the project has been delayed by over 10 years because of protests and a dispute between the ruling and opposition parties. A similar accident could happen at any time in Taiwan, where many quakes occur. The risk of an accident could affect my life and the lives of my children. Taiwanese authorities are planning to hold a referendum to seek public approval for the operation of the facility. They view it as vital in order to secure sufficient electricity supplies. It is unclear when the vote will take place in light of disagreement from opposition parties. A Japanese mountain climber has reached many heights in her career, including being the first woman to reach the summit of Mount Everest. But Junko Tabe has spent the last two years undergoing treatment for cancer in her abdomen. She's still suffering from the side effects, but she's climbing with people from her childhood home in northeastern Japan. There's quite a bit of snow at the top. So make sure you've got your hats and gloves. Junko Tabe is a 74-year-old mountain climber. On this day, she's visiting Mount Mitake in Ome City, West Tokyo. People from Fukushima, who evacuated to the Tokyo area, have gathered for their monthly climbing expedition. They started in the wake of the Great East Japan earthquake of 2011. Tabe looks healthy. But two years ago, her doctor diagnosed her with cancerous peritonitis and told her that without treatment, she would have three months to live. She received chemotherapy and now her condition has stabilized. My feet are tingling all over. She still has pins and needles in her hands and feet, one of the side effects of the treatment. And it's difficult to keep her balance. If she stands with her feet close together, she's likely to stumble. First, I tried to stand up when getting out of bed. Then I tried carefully to take a step, and I found I could still walk. Even the smallest movement just makes me feel alive. Tabe began climbing mountains with people from Fukushima because she wanted to share that precious feeling of standing up and taking the first step. Tabe is from Miharu in Fukushima Prefecture. She's been heartbroken about the situation in her hometown ever since the disaster. The contract for my temporary accommodation ends next March. They said they will extend it, but I also want to go back to my hometown. That's only natural. I have the family graves there. People are growing increasingly anxious as the reconstruction work is not going according to plan. Tabe sympathizes with their worries. Let's keep a steady pace. 
The steep steps at the end of the route are unexpectedly difficult for Tabei. She's worried about her balance, but keeps smiling and tackles them one at a time. After climbing for an hour, they finally arrive at the shrine on the summit. It's uplifting and so relaxing. It's nice to get away from everyday life. The climbers got to know each other on the way up the mountain. And when they reached the top, they were able to enjoy a little downtime together. I'm glad that everyone was so happy to climb with me. It gives me joy to see people enjoying themselves. I would like to continue doing this as long as my condition allows. And I enjoy it for my own sake too. Other people's happiness brings me so much joy. Tabe is planning a hiking trip in her home prefecture of Fukushima this April. Her plan is to travel there to see the spring cherry blossoms. A new generation of smaller nuclear power plants come to Washington. It may take decades of study and permitting to get them here, and there's already plenty of opposition. King Fai's Glenn Farley and why a legislative task force will start tackling some tough questions. When you turn on the lights, or your TV, or the washer, even plug in your cell phone, the juice to power all of that is generated from somewhere. And, wait for it, not all of that juice in our part of the country comes from hydroelectric dams. Nope. 21 percent of it comes from fossil fuels, coal and natural gas plants. And 3 percent comes from nuclear, most from the lone nuclear plant in the state. Should we have more? A bipartisan legislative task force will now look into it. It's a whole different ball game uh, than the nuclear reactors that were built 30 years ago. What State Senator Doug Erickson is talking about is this, a new generation of modular nuclear plants developed in Oregon. It really is a new level of, of simplicity for nuclear power. Built as far safer than older technologies, secure from earthquakes and cooling failures, built in a factory. I think the nuclear renaissance is, is dead. But for nuclear opponents, many fundamental objections remain. There's other options as far as we're concerned. We, we think think that carbon-free and nuclear-free go hand in hand. Tom Buchanan would like to see more solar, wind, tidal, and even big containerized batteries that store power generated in the middle of the night for use during busy times of the day. Nuclear is not carbon-free. That nuclear has a lot of problems with not just its waste, but its fuel cycle. Buchanan argues that making nuclear fuel generates more carbon. Nuclear or renewables, whatever happens, is expected to take decades to play out. So if they're actually concerned about this issue of climate, then nuclear energy needs to be something that we're looking at. For Senator Erickson, it's time to start finding out. Glenn Farley, King 5.